guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have a crazy one for you today. We're going to play Brony R Stomp by Led Zeppelin. So this one is in an insane tuning. Uh, it's in open F tuning. So hopefully you guys will uh, um, be able to get your guitar in that tuning, hopefully. Uh, but before we get into it, Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring that little notification bell um, so you'll know when I release a new video. Um, that always helps. And uh, check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. Got a great community, tons of guitar courses for you to check out. They're all systematic, uh, well laid out, so I hope you go over there and check it out. So let's start here with this tuning. Um, so the only thing harder than saying the name of the song, Brony R, stop, stomp, Brony, hey bro, that's how I remember it, bro, <laughs> uh, um, is uh, we're in open F. So as if you're used to open G tuning, it's basically open G tuning down a whole step. So what are all those notes? So I'll have them in the description as well. So we're going to take the E string and tune it down to a C. Um, then we're going to take the A string, the fifth string, the A string, and tune it down to an F. Then we take the D string, tune it down to a C as well. So we have. Then we're going to take the G string, tune it down a whole step to F. Um, tune the B string down a whole step to A. And then the high E string, you're going to tune down to a C. Now you're going to see the tuning. When you look around at various tabs around the internet, uh, and even the official tab books for this, uh, or stuff like that, any kind of, they're garbage. They're mostly just absolute garbage. They're not, that's not the tuning that he used. Um, and you can tell when he plays it live, there's no capos, there's no all this stuff. He doesn't always play it in F. You play Sometimes, uh, like in Earl's Court, you'll see him, he's actually playing in open G. So he's playing it a whole step higher that is actually on the recorded uh, the recorded version of the song. Um, so, you know, why he did that or whatever. It could be vocally, it worked better uh, for Robert Plant, or it just worked better the sequence of songs that they were doing. Uh, but anyway, the tuning was different, you know, Earl's Court, but he's still playing it the same. And it's still, the tuning layout is identical. It's just everything is up a whole step. So, but he still is using this tuning layout, meaning the strings are spaced like they are here. All right, so it's important to get into that. So I'm in the original recording here, on the original, so this is what we're gonna be following here. So then we have this intro, which has got lots of crazy like hybrid picking and then some flat picking, um, some bluegrass type stuff. And I'm from North Carolina, so, you know, stuff's like in my blood. But anyway, so we're gonna start here with this intro, which is by far the hardest part of the song. So we're gonna start with a harmonic. Two harmonics. So harmonics across the 12th fret, kind of drag the pick across to the B string from the low, I'm gonna call it the low E string, it's obviously not a low E anymore, but we're gonna, I'm gonna name the strings like if it was a standard tuning guitar to make it easy. So E across to the B, the harmonic. You're gonna do the same thing with the 7th, except the 6th string you're gonna keep open. So that's still, that's not a harmonic. So the rest of the harmonics across the B string at the 7th fret. And then we have this little figure. Alright, so now how I'm doing it and how he's doing it, I'm not even sure. So basically, you can choose a couple different ways of picking it. The Probably the easiest way to pick this is that you're going to pick... Um, the, everything in this intro, anything that's on um, the G, D, A, or, uh, well, it's pretty much all the, the, the strings that we're going to have in this picking pattern. If anything that happens on the G, D, or the A string, pick it with a downstroke of the pick. And then anything, you can, you can uh, choose to do two different methods here for the other two strings. You can pick your middle finger, use your middle finger to pick the B string, and then the ring finger to pick the high E. Or you can use just one, just your middle finger to pick both the B string and the high E string, 
Or if you like using your ring finger, you can just use your ring finger to pick the piano hygiene. It doesn't, doesn't matter since it's kind of alternating between the pick all the time. You have you only have to really use one finger to pick the uh, for the finger picking part of it. So that's what I'm using here. So I'm sliding. So what you want to do is you want to play this slide into the ninth fret on the D and also hold the eighth fret on the B string. So after there's harmonics, you're gonna slide into the ninth fret and then grab that eighth fret. Then all we're gonna do is talk about the strings that you're gonna be picking. And remember, if it's on the G, D, or the A, pick it with the downstroke of the pick, and I'm gonna be using my middle finger for the B and the high E. So I'm picking D, E, I'll just, I'll uh, number the, uh, the strings, maybe make it easier for some people. So string four, one, four, two, five, one, four. One more time, sliding into the first note. Four, one, four, two, five, one, four. All right, so that's kind of like the first two times he kind of plays that, it's kind of unique. Um, he doesn't really, um, Repeat it like that later on in the song. Then he does a harmonics again. Uh, you don't have to have the open D in there, uh, the open low E string in there every time. Just the harmonics. And then we have, we go back into the sliding into this again, same fingers you're holding there. Picking's gonna be slightly different though. It's gonna be four, one, three, two, four, one, three. It's a little bit easier to memorize. Four, one, three, two, four, one, three. So, so far we have this. All right, and now he continues holding this and we get into a repetitive pattern that looks like this. It's a four note sequence here that he's going to repeat three times. So that's going to be the, still in those same two notes, pick, pick the fourth string, first string, third string, second. So get used to that for a second. All right, so we're basically going to do that pattern three times. Then what you're going to do is just play the 7th fret on the D and then the open G string. So we have this. And then he goes back to repeat. Now he repeats that part that I just did two more times, but there's a one note difference. Um, so we're going to have the same pattern that starts three times though. And it's this last note, instead of going seven, open G, it goes seven, hit the high E string, then the open G. So it's a little bit more active, it goes, instead of going, it goes. So we have this all together for so the second way of playing it. And repeat that exact same way. So that whole part there, uh, just when we started getting into just the strict picking. All right, then you're gonna shift down here and you're gonna start, it's kind of like a flat picking section, but I'm not convinced that everything, he's flat picking everything. I think he's still using his, uh, his middle finger to pick some of the, like the high E string um, or the B string every once in a while, especially as we get through this flat picking section towards the end of it. Um, you can really hear that snap of the B string, which is telling me that he's going, he's picking the B string instead of, instead of alternate picking across them. Um, so anyway, so before we get there though, we had this. So that's the first phrase here of this kind of flat picking section. 
So that's going to be, what you're going to want to do here though, is you're going to play, hold the third fret there on the B and then the fourth fret on the G. So you're going to play this and pick the fourth fret on the G, pull off to the open string, and then pick the open string again, then an upstroke in the high E string. For this. Now, because you're holding that at the third fret there on the B, those notes are unison notes. So if you hit both the first and uh, second string together, it still sounds great and it kind of actually sounds a little bit fuller. So we have this. So we have pull off, pick open, pick the high E string, and then do the pull off again, four to zero, and then once again, we're gonna pick uh, a downstroke on the open G. So we have this. Upstroke on the open D, and then pick the open D again with the downstroke, and then hammer on the second fret. So we have this. Then to the third fret there that you're holding on the B string, open G, and then you're gonna hit the open G and the B together, and then the high E. So real slow for that set, first phrase. See, this is goes, goes by like hyper you know just if you had to really kind of get that little flat picking vibe to it uh, the idea is play through it very slow until you kind of your fingers you just by ear can memorize those little lines you can just hear them so you're not thinking about the individual notes and it just kind of you just wanted to make it like automatic if you hear it it pops out of your fingers that's the way and by the way he will never play this the same way. I mean, when you see him do it live, he's just always messing around with it. It's not like a distinct pattern that he's playing. Even though I'm trying to break it out for you note for note, um, he it's, it wasn't really written that way. It's kind of just like... He's not really thinking about patterns and getting these things exactly right. All right, now the second phrase looks like this. So that's the second phrase. So we're still holding those same two notes. So you're gonna pull up once again, you're gonna pull off four to zero, and then pick G, pick the open G, and the open high again. So we did that before. And then once again, pick the do the pull off, and then um, the uh, open G. And then we're gonna play two on the G string, pull off to the open. Pick the open G and B string together, and then the open high E string. So we have this so far. And then you're going to end it with the second fret on the D, and then the open D and G together. So this is kind of, seems random. The probably the easiest way is, is I'm breaking it out phrase by phrase here. You might want to write it down. You might want to tab it out. I can't tab it out for you guys, obviously, for copyright stuff. Um, but it, it's probably easier to kind of look at it like that just for this section. The rest of the song is not that difficult to memorize, but it's just this intro. All right, and then we have this. So this is it's kind of the same notes, but you're going to slide into that four and pull off to the open, hit the open G again, then the open high E string. So we have this. You're gonna do the pull off uh, four to uh, zero again, and here you can play the top two strings, then the upstroke on the high E, and then pull off four to zero again, open G and B, and then you're gonna end it with two on the G, and then zero open G with three on the uh, B string. So that that next phrase, remember, it starts with the slide. Missed a note there. Let me do it one more time. Now here is where um, I think the flat picking stops. So you're not just using a pick here. I think he's hybrid picking this next section, um, this next phrase that kind of ends this intro, ends the technical part of the intro. 
Um, the reason why is if you listen to the recording, you can hear this top note kind of being snapped. It's not, it's not being picked. It doesn't have that big round quality that a pick would. And it's also a lot easier to do hybrid picking with it. But it is still tricky, and it sounds like this. So what's going on here is we're going to pick the open D and we're going to hammer on the second fret. Sounds easy enough, but what's happening while he does that hammer on, he picks the B string. So if you wanted to do that straight flat picking, you can hammer and you pick an upstroke on the B, B string right as you do the hammer. So you have to time it. Or you can, like I said, it's a little bit easier to do it, just pick it with your index, your middle finger of the B string. And then you do the same thing again, except the open G string. You're gonna hammer on two. And when you hammer on the two, you're gonna hear the that third from the B picked at the same time. So we have this. So you want to get that down, kind of doing two things at once, I know. And then it has this. So this is very quick. So that also makes me think, besides that snappy sound of the B string, that he's actually hybrid picking it. So that is going to be the open G string, the pick, and then the middle finger taking the B string. And you're going to go back and forth between the two four times. One, two, three, four, and then end it with this. Two on the D string, then the open G, D, G, and then the third fret there on the B together. Let's write this. And then we do that same ascending lick again. And But the lick at the end of it is not straight. It does this. So it, it's a little bit easier actually. So it's a down on the G, and then go G, G, B, and then the G by itself again, and then G, B. And then the same inning. So that's kind of like this. And he gets to that last chord and starts strumming that a little bit, and then we get to the more much easier part of the song. Of the rhythm right real quick there at the beginning but it's basically you're going to hit the third you're basically going to bar across the uh, d a g and b strings with uh just your index finger and hit that twice so it's four middle strings and then you bar across the fifth fret you can just use your third fret finger it's more comfortable for me just to kind of collapse my pinky across it and i think uh jimmy page actually does that as well so we have this just the same four strings at the fifth fret. So hit twice. And then we basically play open strings, those four strings open, with also the fifth fret on the high E with it. So it is. So you basically do that four times. And then after the fourth time, we have a little bit more of aggressive rhythm where he's accenting, like he'll, he'll accent. So what's going on there? He's doing a, kind of a strict eighth note feel. Um, it's a kind of a strict, fast eighth note feel, but he's, accents the first two downstrokes and then he'll start to accent the upbeat then the downbeat then the upbeat then the downbeat so you can hear that down down up down up down and that's how it keeps that kind of swinging feel to so you, you kind of just you 
got to keep that rhythm going, just strict, just you're picking the strings every time, that strict eighth note feel, but you're accenting the first two down strokes, and then you alternate. So it goes down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down. Now what I'm saying, when I'm giving you that pattern, that's the accenting pattern. You're picking the strings every time, down, up, down, up, just like this. You just got to accent. So that's the feeling goes into it. It's it a more aggressive feeling. And then we have this riff that has some pull-offs. It's going to be using a lot uh, within the song. It looks like this. And that takes us into the verse. Um, so you'll see him do this pull-off. So it's that chord that we were talking about, that kind of that kind of the very beginning of that a kind of aggressive rhythm and then he's going to pull off three to zero on the D hit this open strings again then do the same thing on the eight, uh, the third fret on the um, A string and then he's going to just play the third fret on the low E and then go back to the open strings uh, remember just the open strings from the fifth string across so we have this So after he's done that a couple of times, that riff, then the, the drums start coming in and he plays it four more times after that. And then after the sixth time, as soon as we hit that third fret there, sorry, it's going to be a little bit of buzzing. My obviously guitar is not set up for <laughs> open F tuning. Uh, then we get to the verse, which is, uh, looks like this. So, um, so that's I'm doing that kind of pinky bar across the fifth fret of the of uh, the four middle strings again, and then we have the open, the open those four strings open, then third fret, then fourth fret, and then back to the fifth fret. So we have this. After you get to that fifth fret. Back to the open strings and back to the fifth fret. So we have this. So after you go, and then you repeat that little crawl up. So after you've done that three times, then we do third fret and then that back to that open chord. And now it'll pull off riff twice. All right, now from there we get to the chorus, which looks like this. So that is just that so that bar across the four middle strings at the second fret. Then take it up to the fifth fret. And then there's a little, it's really when we get to the fifth fret, we're just basically playing the, the fifth fret across the D, G, and the B. And then we play, we put down our finger down the sixth fret on the B. There's a little melody in there. Then it goes back to five. And then you go over to the seventh fret on the G. So you're gonna play that note in the middle, so on that G string, and then and then back just to the bar across the fifth fret. So this. And then 
then back we go to this. So that's just open four middle strings, then the third fret, and then fifth fret, and up to that open chord, and then again. So the chorus will kick again. So after the chorus is done a couple times, we go back into that little uh, pull-off riff a couple times. And then back into the verse, and then back into the same chorus again. And we do the chorus a couple times. Um, and then we get to this uh, little sliding riff, uh, which sounds like this. So that one's pretty easy to play and, and fun to play too. So he does that, you know, just without any vocals. The second half of it, the second two times the vocals start over. So we're just sliding up. I like to get some extra strings in there too, because it just keep that drum going. That's the great thing about these open tunings. You can just it doesn't matter. You can just not mute anything. Sounds great. So you gotta slide basically up to the 12th fret, bar across the G, B, and the high string. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. So do that a few times. Then, then that's the open strings. Three, five, then the open again. That same familiar bars. To the chorus another like I think it does go through the chorus riff uh, like three times and then we have uh, which sounds like the intro again so now it's not exactly like the intro there are random modes like I think the, the playing is um, not as like note for note precise um, but it so it's pretty easy to just kind of do what we did at the beginning um, but it's abbreviated so you still have those harmonics and then and you know, but so that little section right there when we started getting into that picking pattern that we did at the beginning basically just do the version that has the op that 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 ending like that, that, little, that twice so therefore that little picking section right there is only done two times instead of three. You don't have that little opening one. You don't have that. Just have the two after that. And then from there, just play the first two phrases of the... First two phrases of the, of the flat picking section, and then it stops there. That the intricate picking and it goes back into the chords. Now the chords he does, he goes that three bar chord, five power chord, open chord. You do that three times, and then he starts just doing that kind of aggressive rhythm again. There's on the open string. I just kind of really kind of mutes it a little bit. So it's more of a feel thing that you just have to listen to the recording to kind of get good at. And then we go back to that um, pull-off riff done four times. And then back into the verse. So there's just a slight instrumental, instrumental section, which is just an, uh, an abbreviated version of the intro with this 3-5-0 rhythm and then the open string rhythm and then the pull-off riff. So that's a little mu musical interlude that happens there. 
Um, and then we get back to the old verse again. twice we just end it with the open strings and we are done so it's one of those things that with this intro there's some intricate parts to it and you know go through it like we did it try to get it note for note at first but then I think it's more of just bringing out that you know kind of bringing out the feel of it more than anything and that's what he how he always did it live and just kind of messed around with it and, and really never played it the same way twice. We have like rhythm figures that he would that were real distinct melodic parts that he would repeat live like it is on the recording. But um, for the rest of stuff like that flapping and stuff, you'll, you're not going to really see it repeated the same way. So don't uh, stress out about it. It's very fast part and very intricate to play. Uh, but just get the vibe of it and then uh, get to those chords and that's it's good. Good. You gotta have good, you know, right hand rhythm skills. But other than that, it's not very difficult to play the song. After that, if you can just lock in with the rhythmic feel of it. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.